that does not vary by more than 0.5 degree Celsius or more than 0.9 degree Fahrenheit per day. So it will, you know, remain within a certain normal limit and it, you can call it as fever is persistent. That is a sustained fever. Then is remittent fever. A remittent fever is a bit, if you look at the graph, it will be a bit like intermittent fever. It will remain above the baseline. But the variation in the body temperature throughout the day will be more than 0.5 degree Celsius per day. So if the variation is more than 0.5 degree Celsius per day that is called as remittent fever. Fourth is your relapsing fever. There will be febrile periods separated by intervals of normal temperature and no specific pattern can be found. The common causes of relapsing fever include infectious causes. The common infectious causes taken from Nelson table, they include relapsing fever caused by Borrelia recurrentis, Q fever caused by Coxiella burnetii, typhoid, syphilis, TB, babesiosis, Epstein-Barr virus, fungal causes like histoplasmosis, coccidioides and blastomyces. It can also be seen in meliodosis, dengue, leptospirosis and brucellosis. Then relapsing fever can occur due to non-infectious causes also. One of them was asked as a one-liner in fellowship national board exam, Crohn's disease. Look at the list. Non-infectious causes include Bechet disease, Crohn's disease, I am putting a star, MCQ already asked in entrance exam. Crohn's disease can cause relapsing fever in children. Sweet syndrome, SLE, sweet syndrome is a type of febrile neutrophilic dermatosis, SLE and Weber Christian disease which is a type of paniculitis. So you can write paniculitis here as well. Moving further, we have the fifth variety called as biphasic fever. Biphasic fever will indicate a single illness with two distinct pattern periods of fever. It is also called as camel back fever pattern. Usually the place where it was described, camels will have a hump like this two spikes of fever within the same illness so there will be two spikes occurring like this after a variable period there will be again two spikes happening like this this type of a fever is called as biphasic fever biphasic fever is typically seen in poliomyelitis and other enteroviral infections leptospirosis dengue fever yellow fever colorado tick fever spirillary right bed fever which is caused by spirillium minus and it can be also seen in African hemorrhagic fevers like Marburg, Ebola virus and Lassa fever virus. And then we have the periodic fevers. These are syndromic usually and tend to show a periodic pattern in most cases. For example, typical example is familial Mediterranean fever, so written in short as FMF. You have cyclic neutropenias, you have PFAPA syndrome which stands for periodic fever, apthostomatitis, pharyngitis and adenopathy. It can be seen in hyper IgD syndrome. It can occur in TRAP syndrome. TRAP stands for TNF superfamily IgA associated syndrome. It is also called as hibernian fever and it can be seen in Muckle-Wells syndrome. The next we have the special patterns of fever. Special patterns of fever will be double quotidian fever. What is double quotidian fever? Two peaks of fever will occur within 24 hours. This is different from camelback pattern. In camelback pattern, the two spikes of fever need not occur within 24 hours. They will occur during that same illness, but there will be two distinct peaks. The gap between them will be variable and the gap between two sets of patterns will also be variable. Here it is fixed that within 24 hours, there will be two peaks occurring regularly. That is called as double quotidian fever. Double quotidian fever is again described in some patients of systemic onset GIA and also in an infectious condition called as gonococcal endocarditis. Then there is a variety which is actually not fever. We call it as factitious fever or self-induced fever. You must have seen all those movies where you know they put a onion or a lemon with some salt applied to it under their arm and next day they are having fever. How much they are effective we don't know but uh, all these you know Tacts, desi remedies, external poisons, toxins which are used by persons themselves to produce a fever. That is called as factitious fever. They are caused sometimes by manipulation of the thermometer also or by injection of the pyrogenic material. We call them as factitious fever or self-induced fever. Now, there is a often there is a confusion between intermittent fever versus remittent fever. If I show you a graph, it will be very easy for you to understand. Suppose, let us look at this cycle. Look at this is your baseline. This is the normal body temperature we are talking about, right? This is your 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours, right? Now look at the first graph that I am making. The first graph will be like this. 